Tom has said, the topic of today's presentation is the role and potential of an informal international grouping known as MICTA, which stands for the countries which form the group, namely Mexico, Indonesia, Republic of Korea, Turkey and Australia. I will speak first on the evolution and role of MICTA and on MICTA's current priorities with Australia as chair. My colleagues will then speak about MICTA from their country's perspectives. As Tom mentioned, MICTA was formed in September 2013 when the foreign ministers of Mexico, Indonesia, the Republic of Turkey, Korea, sorry, the Republic of Tur Korea, Turkey and Australia met in the margins of the United Nations General Assembly Leaders Week in New York. As an informal, consultative and cross-regional group, MICTA was formed in recognition of the importance of strong international collaboration and partnerships as the most effective ways to address global challenges in an age of accelerating change. While a diverse group, MICTA members, like Ireland, share the core values of a commitment to democracy, <coughs> human rights, open trade and economic development. <coughs> MICTA also seeks to strengthen multilateralism, facilitate creative and pragmatic solutions to global and regional challenges and to, refer, to reform global governance structures. Since its inception, MICTA countries have also strengthened bilateral ties and enhanced cooperation between them. Through coordination and mutual collaboration on issues of common interest, MICTA can add value to global and regional responses. Regional actors are gaining new prominence and major emerging market economies are exerting greater influence both globally and regionally. MICTA members share a capacity to pursue common interests on the world stage, for example, in the World Trade Organization and periodically in the United States Security Council, with all five members having served on the UNSC in the last seven years. All the MICTA countries are also members of the G20, the Group of 20, which of course is the premier forum for international economic cooperation and decision making. The G20 accounts for 85% of the world economy, 76% of global trade, and two thirds of the world's population, including more than half of the world's poor. The combined GDP of MICTA countries is over 5.8 trillion, which is about 8% of the world's economy, and this share is expected to grow. The combined population of the MICTA countries is around 530 million, about 8% of the world's population. The MICTA countries are like-minded on many global issues, and all are active contributors on the global stage. As such, MICTA can contribute in a constructive fashion to facilitate solutions to global and regional challenges, including the changing balance of power, the increasing importance of regionalism, the growing relevance of non-state actors, nuclear non-proliferation, and the fight against terrorism. The first foreign ministers' meeting was in the margins of the UN General Assembly in New York in September 2013. Mexico chaired the group for its first year, followed by the Republic of Korea. Under their leadership, MICTA's role and profile developed in keeping with the vision that MICTA could provide pragmatic and constructive solutions to challenges affecting global prosperity and security. Now under Australia's leadership, the five countries will keep working to develop MICTA into a meaningful cooperation mechanism. We seek to promote MICTA as an important initiative that can play a constructive and significant role within the international community and a bridging role between developed and developing economies. Australia is pleased to be delivering a productive year as Chair of MICTA and is keen to ensure that MICTA delivers tangible outcomes, in particular in terms of embedding habits of collaboration in the multilateral fora. At a recent MICTA senior officials meeting held in Sydney earlier this year, seven ongoing core priorities were agreed. These were international energy governance and security, energy access, counter-terrorism and security, peacekeeping, trade and the economy, gender equality, democracy and good governance and development cooperation. <clears throat> Recent activities to support these priorities include a MICTA humanitarian dialogue in the margins of the World Humanitarian Summit in support of summit outcomes and their imp implementation, especially on the topics of disaster and gender, that was on the 23rd of May in Istanbul, and a meeting of MICTA delegates in the margins of the 11th International Renewable Energy Agency, otherwise known as IRENA, the IRENA Council meeting in Abu Dhabi on the 26th of May, which discussed <coughs> MICTA's promotion of energy access. Upcoming activities include a joint statement at the Conference of State Parties to the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, 
in June in New York and a joint statement on women's rights and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development at the Human Rights Council in June in Geneva. MICTA foreign ministers will meet again during the Leaders' Week in, UN, in the UN in New York and um, they will also have various bilateral meetings. MICTA also reinforces bilateral relationships within the group. For example, MICTA countries have hosted exchanges of parliamentarians, journalists, diplomats, students and young professionals. Other types of joint activities that MICTA might undertake include joint statements. For example, MICTA issued a very important statement on the 9th of January. On the 9th of January, MICTA issued a statement on a, on a DPRK nuclear test, which I think is an example of how MICTA can really engage and, um, if you like, show its relevance and meaningfulness and make a very um, important international contribution um, in areas such as, you know, um, topics, uh, topics such as the North Korea nuclear tests and, you know, security issues in that region. Um, other activities include non-papers non that contribute to progress on multilateral issues, advocating common messages and workshops and side events in the, major, in the margins of major international events. MICTA is also relevant to Ireland and the EU member states. In January 2015, the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade released its foreign policy review, The Global Ireland, Ireland's policy, Foreign Policy for a Changing World. The Global Ireland reaffirmed Ireland's principal engagement in international development, human rights, disarmament and UN peacekeeping, and a greater emphasis on global engagement to help secure a prosperous future for Ireland. Ireland has extensive people-to-people, -people, trade and investment, educational, sporting, cultural and other links with each of the MICTA countries. MICTA's merchandise trade with Ireland increased over 25% from 3.4 billion in 2013 to 4.3 billion in 2014 euro, which is higher than Ireland's merchandise trade with Italy or Spain. MICTA's diversity and versatility make it a new model for cross-regional and value-added partnership and as such, MICTA will serve as a bridgehead for fostering various forms of cooperation. To conclude, MICTA represents a forum for dialogue and engagement between the EU and five key regional, con key regional players in the multilateral context on a range of global, regional and transnational issues. And as such, it is a representative and a good example of new and non-traditional mechanisms for global and regional cooperation. Thank you.